ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم فان تنازعتم في شيء فردوه الى الله والرسول ان كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الاخر ذلك خير واحسن تاويلا وقال تبارك وتعالى ولو ردوه الى الرسول والى اولي الامر منهم لا علمه الذين يستنبطونه منهم وقال تبارك وتعالى فاسالوا اهل الذكر ان كنتم لا تعلمون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم انما شفاء العي السؤال او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام ريسبكتد علماء الكرام ايلدرز برادرز مدرز اند سيسترز ليسنينج Alhamdulillah, today's gathering on different topics, very important topics. As Muslims living in the 21st century, facing all the different types of challenges, especially this day and age, the prophecy of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ الزَّمَانِ الصَّابِرُ فِيهِمْ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِذِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ That a time will come upon the people that a person who's persevering, who's trying to be steadfast on his deen is like the person who's holding hot charcoal on his hands. So it will be very difficult, very challenging for a person to remain on his deen. The Prophet ﷺ has given so many prophecies regarding this time that لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه A time will come that nothing will remain of Islam but his name. A person will be called a Muslim just because of his name. What's your name? Abdullah. What's your name? Abdul Rahman. What's your name? Aisha. What's your name? Khadija. Nothing else. Do you perform your salah? No. Do you observe fast? No. Do you give zakat? I don't know what zakat is. Have you ever thought about performing a hajj? No. So it's only going to be by name. لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه وَلَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا رَسْمُهُ There will be nothing remaining of the Qur'an but the script. So every single one of us in our homes, we will have Qur'an Majid on our mobile phones, we will have the app where the full Qur'an will be there, even the translation, the commentaries. And we will think that is sufficient, that will suffice. But if I ask this question to each one of us, that many of us, we might have recited the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan, completed the Holy Qur'an. But after the Holy Month of Ramadan, it's been nearly three months, how many of us we have completed the Qur'an khatam? How many of us we have opened the Qur'an? So, وَلَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا رَسْمُهُ The script will be there. Every single house will have the Qur'an on the shelves. Dust will be falling on them, but we will not be opening them. These have been the prophecy of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, مَسَاجِدُهُمْ عَامِرَةٌ وَهِيَ خَرَابٌ مِّنَ الْهُدَىٰ That the masjid, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apparently it will be beautifully decorated. External beautification, it will be there. But internally there will be no one who will be spiritually strong. They will be coming to the masjid. If we ask ourselves here, how many of us we performed our Fajr Salah in Jama'at today? So this is a question for us too. Think about that these are the signs. And when these signs come, subhanAllah, what is going to happen? Misguidance. And people will be completely in confusion. They will not know what to do. And this day and age, even though we have so much means of seeking knowledge, but misguidance has come. يَتَقَارَبُ الزَّمَانِ وَيُقْبَضُ الْعِلْمِ وَتَذْهَرُ الْفِتَنِ the Prophet ﷺ has said time will become close to each other. A year will look like a month. A month will look like a week. A week will look like a day. And a day will finish like an hour. Hour like a minute. A minute like a second. And this is what's happening. 
What are the rule fitan? Fitna. Different types of fitna will appear. And we can see all these types of fitna appearing within ourselves. Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Dehli Rahmatullah Ali writes in Hujjatullah al Baligha, I'lam anna al fitna ala aqsam. Remember, know that there are different types of fitna. There are different types of trials and tribulations. Minha fitna tur wajuli fi nafsihi bi ay yaksu wa kalbu. That one type of fitna is that fitna which will be personal, which will have implications on a person individually, on his personal level. Bi ay yaksu wa kalbu his self, he will be, his heart will become very hardened. فَلَا يَجِدُ لَذَّةَ الطَّاعَةِ وَلَا لَذَّةَ الْمُنَاجَاتِ He will not be able to get any benefit, he will not feel, he will not find any lazzat, any sweetness in his munajat, oneness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his supplication, in his prayers, or in his ibadah. So these are the signs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned and this is what Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehli Rahmatullah has mentioned that this is what's going to be happening. We can see all this now. That many of our brothers, we don't want to have that one-to-one -one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't wake up in the morning for our Fajr Salah but we will be on our social media all night. There's no problem with that. And from those fitna, he mentions Minha fitna tur rajul fi ahlihi wa waladihi wa malihi so the fitna will be within his family members. And what will happen is a person, he will be, problems will be faced from all sides within his family. That what will happen is his wife, his children, they will make him. يُكَلِّفُونَهُ مَا لَا يُتِيقُ يُعَيِّرُونَهُ بِالْفَقْرِ They will force him. And they will burden him with those things he, which he is not capable of. And they will tease and taunt him because he can't provide. They will tease him and taunt him of poverty. And we can see this. And some of this, one of the fitna says, تَغَيُّرُ insani an aslihi." A person will be leaving his natural living. He will not, the person, what will happen is, he will lose his natural instincts. Like nowadays we see a person Forget Islam, even insaniyat, any a person's insaniyat, humanity has gone. Islam is on the second level, the first level of insaniyat, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ And we see this, that marriage has become a taboo. And all these other things which are in the society, I don't need to spell them out, they have become a norm. So that's why the hadith is saying that a time will come, ma'roof will become munkar and munkar will become ma'roof. Good will become evil, evil will become good. لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكون أسعد الناس بالدنيا لقع ابن لقع قيامة will not come until the most successful person in the worldly matters, in the worldly perception, according to the people of the world, he will be a person who will be very low in morals and he will be the son of a person who is very low. And we can see this. And in that he said minha Fitna to sabbi salaf is salih. One of the fitna that will grip this ummah is swearing at the salaf is salih. That la'ana akhiru ummatiha awwalaha. That the people, the latter people, they will be cursing the predecessors, the former, our great pious scholars, the sahaba ikram. And we can see this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, Allah, Allah, la tattakhiduhum gharadam min ba'di. Allah, Allah, fi ashabi, that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding my sahaba ikram, don't make them the object of vilifying, of swearing, of criticizing. Man abghadahum fa bibughdi abghadahum. A person who hates them, he hates them because he hates me. And if he loves them, وَمَنْ أَحَبَّهُمْ فَبِحُبِّ أَحَبَّهُمْ And if he loves them, he loves them because of me. So what has happened today, the fitna that we are gripped with, is we think to ourselves, we know everything. Especially this day and age when we have the social media. <coughs> when we were young, we never heard of this fitna that a person will be following his own desires. أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have you seen a person who follows his own desires? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that always throughout history, there have been a group of people who have always followed their own desires. They thought to themselves, whatever I think is right, I will follow. And Islam is a complete religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accomplished and completed this religion. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed his hujjat al-wada on the day of Arafah, the historical day, Sayyiduna Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam came with these verses, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. Today I perfected your religion, I have accomplished everything and I've chosen Islam for you. So Islam is a complete religion and for us to understand the full religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we have to enter Islam entirely. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kafa. O oh, believers, enter Islam entirely. Wala tattabi'u khutwaat is shaitan. Don't follow the shaitan. Don't follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Why? Innahu lakum aduwu mubin. Indeed, he is your enemy, sworn enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from a time a child is born till the end, till his end of his life, everything has been governed. Everything has been clearly stated. What we have to do from the day one. And we have to make sure that we follow the footsteps of the pious predecessors and how it has been interpreted to us. So the topic about taqlid, about following. From the time of the Prophet وسلم, it has been made very clear from the Holy Quran, the evidence from the Quran, evidence from the Hadith, these have been made very clear. There was no doubt about all this, there was nothing to worry about, there was no confusion. But as day passes by, we have so many people with coming with so many different kind of fitna, different kind of uh, ways, different kind of masail, different kind of perception. Like just recently what happened was this father called me over, said my son, and listen to this very carefully, my son he's 18 years old, he goes to college and he used to perform his five time prayers and now he says he doesn't need to perform his five time prayers. He's got this website, he goes on this website and these people they call themselves Ahle Quran. Forget Ahle Hadith, Ahle Quran, one step further. So they only believe the Quran. So the parents called me and they said, can you explain to my son? So I went up to him and I said, look, what's happened? So subhanAllah, the amazing thing is like in Sahih Ibn Majah, he mentions about an uh, incident in the beginning chapter, Ittiba'i Sunnatun Nabi, that a time will come that you will see person. That he will be saying, Ma wajadna fi kitabillah. Whatever we find in the kitabullah, in the Quran, that is sufficient. We don't need to look into the hadith. And they will be sitting on these sofa sets. The hadith have mentioned arikati. Couches, and they will be sitting on there. And exactly when I saw this youngster, I said, Sadaq Allah wa Sadaq Rasulu. Allah and his messenger has told the truth. Because we, we read that in our mothers and we taught that, but we didn't see that with our own eyes. So this youngster, the father said, stand up, move this arms here. He said, who, sh who shall I stand up for? I'm not going to stand up for him. He's a mushrik. These were his words. There was another senior scholar with me, one of our imams, Amala Ashraf Ali Sikdar. He was with me and he said, we don't, I don't want to and he, talk to them. He said, no, no, he's a scholar. You need to speak to him. So the week before the my teacher, my uh, Imam Sab, he came and tried to speak to me in Bangla. They said, I don't understand Bangla. They said, okay, speak in English. So I said, okay, I'll speak to you in English. So he said, look, if you want to debate with me, it's only from the Quran. You can't use any Hadith. Because I'm Ahle Quran. Because these Hadiths, Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullah, he was born 200 years after the Prophet Sallallahu How can you base these Hadiths that they are correct? How can you say these are correct? They <coughs> They're not correct. The weak hadith, they fabricated and he started to uh, put all these allegations against Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. I said, okay, if we base our debate, our argument upon the Quran, that's no problem. So I, in front of me, I put my uh, evidence forward. I said, look, you say you follow the Quran. Okay, what does this Quranic verse say? Qul in kuntum Allah fattabi'uni. That if you say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow who? Follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So this is talking to you that you have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That proves that sunnah is an evidence from the Quran. 
So obviously these people don't have no information. They just looked at this website. They follow these celebrities on YouTube and they started to follow them. So he said, no, it's my words against your words. I said, no, it's not my words. It's the words of the Quran. So he said to me, no, no, I don't accept this. I said, okay. Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. What do you say about this? That indeed, the, in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a beautiful example. He is a role model. May yuti'ur rasul faqad ata'allah. That the person who follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has indeed obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I mentioned at least good 10, 15 verses of the Holy Quran. Every time he came up and he replied that it's my words against your words. So I said, brother, so what are you going to accept? You said you're going to accept the Quran. Why you don't accept the Quran? So what does he say? Listen to this. He says to me, why have you got in your masjid la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? So I said, what does that mean? Because in the Quran he said, la nufarriqu bayna ahadim minhu. That you shouldn't have no distinction. Why don't you have La ilaha illallah Ibrahimu Khalilullah? Why don't you have other prophets name as well? In some masjid you should have other prophets. Why have you put that distinction? So he's gone to that depth. So I said to him, how many prayers do you perform? Because I perform five, but then the five are not mentioned clearly in the Quran. Only two are mentioned clearly. Because yeah, I only read two. So how do you do Ruku Sajidah if you don't even accept the Quran, Hadith? So after explaining all this and all throughout my talk with him for one hour the father mother grandfather grandmother they were standing they were not even sitting down they were crying and said you know after manila manila but they were just crying i could see the tears in the eyes and they were just crying accept he, he's a great mufti accept him he whatever he's saying is the truth Subhanallah, this child, the son, he gets angry on the parents, the father, the mother, grandfather, grandmother, because you, all of you, just keep your mouth shut, you all are mushrik as well, these two are mushrik, just go out. This is the situation. This is what's happening. And this is not the only one, I go to different places for lecture, I was giving a lecture in one of the places in Midlands. So after my lecture, when I said, Laqad kana lakum fi uswatun hasana, I was talking about the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu One of this per person, he came, why are you using this Quran, hadith, Quranic verse to explain hadith? So I said, why? why do because hadith, don't ever mention hadith. I said, so what do you understand then? Because no, no, these hadith are not correct. They're not authentic. You have to only use the Quran as your evidence. So it's not only one person, it's not an isolated case. On so many different situations. I, I was giving a lecture in Manchester area. So this student from the Manchester University who's doing his MA in math, uh, new, uh, mathematics. So he had all the hadiths of Bukhari Sharif, all the hadiths where there was apparent contradiction because this hadith where he says the Prophet وسلم, after getting prophethood, he had doubts regarding this Nabuwat. So if a prophet has doubt himself, how should we follow him? Look at how serious it has become. If he has doubt, why should we follow him who has doubt in his own prophethood? He had to go to his wife to clarify everything. <coughs> so this is the kind of our youngsters are going misguided completely. That's why subhanallah, inna Allah la yaqbidul ilma intiza'an yantazi'u min al-ibad, walakin yaqbidul ilma biqabdil ulama. This is what's happening. That Allah subhanahu doesn't take this knowledge by just snatching it away. But by the scholars going away, what happens is there will be no reliable scholars remaining. And these people will take those people who are completely misguided themselves. They are ignorant. They don't have no knowledge. DIY scholars we call them. Do it yourself scholars. So these people, they will become the leaders. Fasu ilu, and they'll be asked. Fadallu they themselves will be misguided, and they will misguide other people as well. And we can see that on a daily basis. So these fitna of not following the imams, because when a person wants to follow his own desires, then you see many brothers. You ask them, why are you stretching your legs so far for? Why are you raising your hands in this way? Because I, so some of the brothers they say it looks exciting, it looks very good. <coughs> when I say Amin loudly, it looks very good, mashallah. That's the only reason I do it for. So they don't even understanding the evidence behind it or there's no, there's no substance in it. 
So the thing is that when we, the taqlid is very, very important. Our scholars have mentioned this very clearly in their books. And subhanAllah, so many books have been written. When this fitna started to spread out so much and prevailed everywhere. So I thought to myself, I need to write a book. Alhamdulillah, and I compiled this book because should I follow madhab? Should I follow Muslim? We can get hold of that from Azhar Academy, from all the different bookshops as well. Alhamdulillah, many of our scholars, many of our teachers, they have also uh, and he said this book is very important this day and age. So it has all the, first of all, all the evidence. So all the evidence have been mentioned there. And the common questions that are posed regarding taqlid. So obviously we have to take the Quran and Hadith as our substance, our evidence. So the verse that I recited in the beginning is very clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. O believers, ati'u Allah, obey Allah, obey the messenger, wa ulil amri minkum, and obey those people who, and who got the authority, ulil amr. So Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anuhuma, who is the Ra'is al-Ummah and, and he is the Hebrew al-Ummah who is the sage, who is the scholar of this Ummah and Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anuhuma both have said wa ulul amr, he refers to the fuqaha. Very clear that we follow Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we obey them and we obey what wa ulul amri minkum. So those people who are of authority. So this refers to fuqaha, the jurist. So these people, we have to take this in mind before I go forward, is many of these people who don't want to follow, uh, follow any of the Imams, they say, no, why should we follow Imam Anifah Rahmatullahi? We should directly just follow the Quran and Hadith. So we tell them that these four Imams, whether it's Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah Ta'ala, whether it's Imam Malik Rahimahullah Ta'ala, whether it's Imam Shafi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, whether it's Imam Ahmad Ibn Hamad Rahmatullahi, they are not the legislator, they are not the lawmakers, they are the interpreters. So Ulil Amri Minkum, they have interpreted. So many people like in Bradford, in our Yorkshire, many of these brothers will come and say, are you reading the Muhammadi Salah or the Hanafi Namaz? So they're completely confused. So I said, no, no, we're reading Muhammad, the, the Prophet Salah Salah Namaz. So, we, so when people say, like when we teach our fiqh, we teach Quduri, we teach Hidayah, we teach Shara Kanzu Daqaiq, Al Ikhtiyar, and Dukhrul Mukhtar and all these fiqh kitabs of Hanafi fiqh, we say we're teaching you the namaz of the Prophet Sallallahu through the interpretation of our scholars who are great scholars. They had that knowledge. That's why the Quran is saying that you don't know yourself. So when you don't know, then you put that forward to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he's not alive in this world, then what happens? You go to those people who have authority. And la alimahu minhum. So they will do istimbat. They will deduce and extract the masail for us. So subhanAllah, we don't know. Like this youngster came and he said, Look, Mufti, you are doing taqlid. You are a mushrik. You do shirk. Clear. So I said, what do you do? So I said, I follow the Quran and Hadith. I said, so what does this, Quran, this Quranic verse mean? Ya yuladina amna wa Allah wa atiyu rasulu wa amri minkum. So he looked at me and he said, Wallahu alim. I said, brother, you don't even know how to say Wallahu alam. You don't know even the basic of Nahwa and Saf, it, etymology and morphology and syntax. You don't know the basic Arabic grammar and you saying that you're going to directly deduce Masail from the Quran Hadith? You're going to be misguided properly? This is the situation. So the point here is our ulamas, our scholars, the great Imams, they have done every, all the hard work for us. They have put it on the plate for us to eat. So for us, for example, if a person, was, if you're not a cook, like we don't know how to cook. If we were told that you have to get all these different kind of food, you have to get all these ingredients and try to make something. So we will make a mess of it. So what has happened here is those people, our mothers, our wives, our sisters, our aunties, they know how to make the food. They have put everything on the plate for us. In the same way, exactly what has happened is, these great Imams, they have done all the hard work. Do you know Imam Shafi rahimahullah, subhanAllah, reminds me that someone asked him, what's the evidence for ijma from the Quran? So he searched in the Holy Quran, he recited the Holy Quran from the beginning till the end, from Surah Al-Fatiha to Surah Al-Nas. Once 
second time, third time. And after three times you're reciting the entire Quran, he said, I have found the evidence. Who's going to do all this? We don't even recite the entire Quran in one year. And he recited and he said, I found the evidence. So he says this verse, so he says, Wanuslihi Jahannam, this verse which is talking about that those people who don't follow, Ghayda Sabil Mu'mineen, the path of those people who are the believers, this is a evidence that this ijma is a evidence. This, this is the evidence, this Quranic verse. So he read the Quran three times, full from the beginning till the end. So these people have done all the hard work for us. So basically, what we need to understand is all this is. Put on the plate for us. So, Ya minkum. The scholars have mentioned that this is referring, and not me and you, we're not saying that. The great scholars, the Sahaba Ikram, they are mentioning that this is referring to the Fuqaha Ikram. There will always be, because all of us, we can't go and seek knowledge. How many of us we can take time out? and 10 years and seek this knowledge and 20 years. These people, the entire life, they have sought this knowledge and they have put it on the plate for us. So, Ya Allah, this is an evidence from the Quran that we have to make sure that we follow the Fuqaha. The second verse I read was, If you don't know ourselves, istimbat, the word has been used as istimbat. And istimbat from the Nabat, it comes when a person is taking petrol, how hard it is to take out. So in the same way, to take out the Masail is not an easy thing. It's a very intricate matter. It's a very complicated matter. These scholars day and night, subhanAllah, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah he used to sit with his great students all night from Isha till Fajr and looking into the Masai, researching and studying and then deducing all these Masai. So it wasn't an easy thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They will do the istimbat. So this is saying that those people who do the istimbat, you follow them. So these two Quranic verses telling us that we should be doing taqlid. Third verse, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That ask those people of knowledge, أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Hakim Akhtar sahab rahmatullahi subhanallah he mentions under this verse, he said, Allah subhanahu wa didn't say أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ He said أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ This is a very important point. That is saying to us that ulama should be أَهْلَ الذِّكْر We should be always doing dhikr. Of tasawwuf. So many of us nowadays we think to ourselves tasawuf is not a needed branch. It's one of the main important branch of deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying fas'alu ahla dhikri. And we can't get this tasawuf just ourselves. We have to go to those people who are the expert in that field. That's why one great scholar came to Hakim Ulam Mashayah Hashif Ali Tanwi rahmatullah alayhi. And he said I'm a scholar. I know I could study all these books of tasawuf. And I could rectify myself. So what's the need for me to take bay'ah, take the oath of allegiance from a scholar, from a sheikh, from a peer? So, Sheikh Ashraf Ali Tanwi rahmatullahi subhanallah, Hakim al he immediately just said to him, the Quranic verse where he mentions about the Prophet sallallahu mission, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ يُزَكِّيهِمْ Can you explain to me what يُزَكِّيهِمْ is it فَيْلِ الْلَعَزِمُ وَفَيْلِ مُتَعَدِّي Subhanallah, those who understand Arabic will understand. So he's saying فَيْلِ مُتَعَدِّي is where you need a file and a maf'ul. So you have to yuzakki him, the Prophet he was the muzakki. He was the one who did the tazkiyatun nafs of the Sahaba Ikram. And this silsila, this chain continued for tabi'in, tabi tabi'in till today. And ya yu alladhina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. This taqwa, this staying in the company of the pious people, righteous people remain till the day of judgment. This is a very important point. I just thought in the middle, I'll just explain. That when Allah ma'alu sayyid rahmatullah, he puts unto wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. That how long should you stay with these pious people? How long? He said, Khalituhum hatta takunu mithlahum. That you stay with them until you become like them. So, Fas'alu Ahl dhikri is referring to the ulama who are also Sufi, also pious, who have rectified themselves from all the spiritual illnesses, all the ruhani amrav. So, the point here is ask those people if you don't know. So, what, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us? That they will be always, majority of the people, they will not know. They have to ask those people. Who have the knowledge, who have the understanding. Okay. So basically, hadith. So these were the Quranic verses. So obviously, taqlid topic, subhanallah, this is a very important topic. And I would say that uh, 
if you can get hold of this book, should I follow Madhab? Alhamdulillah, all these points have been mentioned in that book. Alhamdulillah. So I just want to say the Prophet Sallallahu in his time, he has said that follow after me, follow the two leaders, referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said about Sayyidina Abdullah Musur radiallahu ta'ala anhu that I like for Abdullah Musur radiallahu what I like for yourself. So follow Abdullah Musur radiallahu ta'ala All this time when Mu'ad radiallahu was dispatched to Yemen, he himself asked Sayyidina Abu Az radiallahu ta'ala anhu that how will you deduce the Masail? He said from the Quran, if you don't find the Quran from the Hadith, if you don't find it from the Hadith, I will do ijtihad. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he appreciated this. So the point here is that taqlid has always been from the time. Look, look at the great Imams. Imam Tirmizi rahmatullahi alayhi and all this Imam Bayhaqi rahmatullahi alayhi all the great Imam, all the Siha Sitta Imams, all the rest of the scholars who Imams themselves, they even did taqlid. So for us to make this excuse or to say that no we are directly following the Quran and Hadith this will be completely wrong because what is going to happen we are going to be completely misguided because following if you just follow the Hadith because there's different types of Hadith there are Hadith which are very clear cut so it's very easy to follow but those Hadith is where there's two types of Hadith one is saying you do it one is saying you don't do it how are you going to how are you going to specify which one is correct one is which one is not which one is abrogated, which is not abrogated. So all these different kind of points we have to keep in mind. And the scholars have already done that for us. Like one person, he, um, he was talking to me and he was saying that, you know, Witr Salah is one rakat. I said, what about the three rakats? There are hadith where it says three rakats, five rakats. So what are you going to do? Because no, I'm going to just... I said, then if you're just following one hadith, what's going to happen about the other hadith? So our scholars, subhanAllah, they have those who have understood it, usul, uh, usul uh, fiqh, usul uh, shashi, and nul anwar, and husam, and all these different kitab, we will understand that how they actually reconcile the hadiths. So this thing will only, because these scholars, their entire life, they have put that effort in and they have made it easy. For us, for our easiness, for our ease and for us to be guided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put all these scholars and these, especially these four Imams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted them. It's not that the other, there's so many other Imams, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these four Imams, they masail from kitabul iman to kitabul faraiz all the masail has been all completely researched and put forward that's why this ummah has unanimously accepted these four imams that anybody who follows any of these four imams he'll be the guided one and this day and age the scholars have mentioned that in the for now it's wajib to do taqlid it's necessary to do taqlid those who are not going to be doing taqlid it is very easy to be misguided especially following their own desire because you know pick and choose I'll just give an example, I'll finish my topic off. Like a person, he's about to go and perform his salah. On the way, what's happened is he started to bleed. So he's going to be thinking, now it's namaz, I'm going to miss my salah. So he thinks to himself, what will happen is, uh, I will just follow Imam Shafi Rahmatullahi. I will take that ruling where the wuzu doesn't break. So he takes that ruling. Then he comes and his wife comes in front and he hugs his wife and he says, oh, if I follow Imam Shafi, now what's going to happen is my wuzu is going to be. No, now I'm following Imam Abu Nifa. So what's going to happen now is this in the Arabic terminology, in the fiqh terminology, this is called talfiq. And talfiq is not permissible according to all the Imams. So this is what's happening because according to Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, both Imams, your namaz is not done. And this is many times, this is what's happening. Those people who want to pick and choose and follow their own desires, it's not going to happen. We're going to go misguided. So for us, success and ease will be and for our success, it will be for us to follow one of the four Imams. And why do we follow Imam Ali Rahmatullah? Because that's easy. Because the people who are around us, especially in the UK, majority of the people that follow Imam Ali Rahmatullah, the Masail are all uh, completely researched and they're all documented for us. It's easy for us to follow. And Subhanallah, like Imam, uh, our Sheikh Rashid Amun Gungoy, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, Subhanallah, all the Masail of Imam Ali Rahmatullah for me is exactly according to the Hadith. I can't see anything which contradicts the Hadith. These are our scholars who have put all this forward. May Allah subhanahu wa give us the true understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering here. Wa akhiru da'awan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.